So a lot of people take this exposure and repetition to just mean kind of rote memorization and do the same thing every day. No, here's where we start to see that emotions and context matter in those episodic memories. So what mood, what feelings are we giving to students as we lead them through these experiences, these episodes in their life? Because that will dictate how they interpret these, remember these moments, which will in turn dictate how they make their semantic facts. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is The Effects of Mood and Retrieval Cues on Semantic Memory and Metacognition by Hall and colleagues. Now, to wrap our heads around this article, we've got to understand that memory comes in a ton of, of styles and flavors. And two in particular are what we call episodic memories and semantic memories. So episodic memories are memories we have for moments, for events, for times in our life, for little episodes in our life. So for instance, if you think back to your last birthday, that's an episodic memory. It's got a time, it's got a place, it's something you did, it's something you experienced. Semantic memories, on the other hand, are memories for facts, for ideas, for information that are kind of standalone and isolated. So for instance, when I say, what year was the Declaration of Independence signed? That's a fact you can access that isn't the same as an experience as your birthday party last year. Now, why does this matter? So there are decades of research showing that mood and emotions have a huge role on episodic memories. How you feel, the mood you're in when you make an episodic memory will kind of determine how you can access that memory later. So for instance, if you were really happy at your party, it's easier for you to remember your party when you're happy in the future. But if you were sad at your party, then it's easier to remember when you're sad in the future. So kind of our emotions, our mood becomes imprinted on that memory and dictates how we can then kind of access those episodic memories later. So we've had this long history of mood and episodic memories, but believe it or not, no one has ever looked at the impact of mood on retrieving semantic memories. Do we have the same kind of effect? So what these researchers did is they sat people down and they induced either a positive or a negative mood. So they spent about five or 10 minutes just looking at positive pictures, writing positive affirmations, or looking at negative pictures, talking about things they don't like. And once people were in these moods, they then asked them 50 general knowledge questions. So things testing their semantic facts, things like uh, who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird? And what did these researchers find? Well, it turns out that mood had absolutely no impact on semantic memory retrieval, confidence, or judgment of knowledge. It was, didn't matter if you were happy or sad, semantic memories were just semantic memories. You got them or you don't, you did it or you didn't. This means that semantic memories are our usable knowledge. Because they're not tied to any mood, to any emotion or context, because they're acontextual, you can access them whenever, however, building semantic memories becomes key when we want people to start using information to build bigger ideas and concepts. Now, what does this matter for us? How does this swing back to education? To understand, you have to ask the question, where do semantic memories come from? It turns out semantic memories all begin as episodic memories. You didn't just one day learn that Harper Lee wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. You heard about it first. You started with an episodic memory, that day somebody told you about it. And then you made another episodic memory. Maybe a week later you picked up the book in the bookshop and you said, oh, Harper Lee did it. And then maybe a couple weeks later you saw the movie on TV. The point is you built all these episodic memories and from those you were able to glean out this semantic fact. So episodic memories, which are highly influenced by mood and emotion, are the building blocks for these semantic memories, which seem to be devoid of emotion and largely acontextual. So what does this mean for us? Well, idea number one, if semantic memories are created from episodic memories, then exposure and repetition are key in early learning. It's not enough just to give somebody one exposure to a fact. We need to build multiple episodic memories surrounding the same ideas, the same information, if we ever hope for kids to suss out those semantic facts and build that usable knowledge that we can start to go deeper with and start playing with over here. Which brings us into idea number two. So a lot of people take this exposure and repetition to just mean kind of rote memorization and do the same thing every day. No, here's where we start to see that emotions and context matter in those episodic memories. So what mood, what feelings are we giving to students as we lead them through these experiences, these episodes in their life? Because that will dictate how they interpret these, remember these moments, which will in turn dictate how they make their semantic facts. And finally, 
This kind of gives a new light to the, the idea of low stakes quizzes or no stakes quizzes. The idea being that most knowledge quizzes are meant to test semantic facts. Do you have this bit of information in here so we can start to push forward? Importantly, if students have that semantic information, then their mood, how they're feeling that day, shouldn't impact their performance on these small little tests. Now, to be fair, stress can impact test performance, but believe it or not, stress isn't an emotion. And that's something maybe we'll take a look at later. But whether a kid is, is having a good day, a bad day, feeling great, feeling horrible, that really shouldn't impact whether or not they can access these semantic facts. Meaning if they're passing these quizzes, it's a pretty good sign they've got the information we need them to have, and it's time to move on to deeper learning and start pushing them further. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you heard, please give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and if you could subscribe as well, that'll just make sure this video gets out onto more feeds across YouTube, more people can see it. Otherwise, I hope you're all well, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, y'all.